How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. As you guys know, we've been working on a little bit of leather. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to make sort of like a, um, a leather pony, like a vice. But I want it to sit on my table. I don't want one to go between my legs. I just want it to kind of clamp to my table. So I got some uh, old plywood here. And I'm going to just see if I can come up with my own little... Um, uh, pony for the uh, table that I work on. I want to be able to clamp it down and clamp my leather in there and be able to sew it. So that's what I'm going to be working on in this video. So let me show you the plywood that I'm going to be using. Okay, this is the plywood we're going to be using. Uh, this is a birch plywood, I think. It's a finished plywood. It's a nice plywood. Uh, I was building some, I think I might have had this left over from uh, either some cornhole games that I had made or my grandson's bed, one or the other. Uh, so we're going to be cutting this wood up, using it for our, our uh, little uh, sewing pony. I think that's what they call them, but this is more of like a, just a sewing vise. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this five inches wide. That's how wide my clamp's going to be. Okay, now I got my saw set at a 22 degree, 22.5 degree angle. Uh, and we got it set at about three quarters of an inch in. Now, I would do this on my chop saw, but uh, my son borrowed it and never brought it back. So, I got to do it on a table saw. Hopefully, I could do this without hurting anything. Okay, we got one uh, side done. We're going to go ahead and do the other side the same way. Not sure how this is going to work out, but we're going to do the best we can with it. Alright, since we don't have the chop saw, we're just going to cut six inches off of both sides of this where we cut the angle. Alright, so I'm going to mark an inch and a half off of this piece we cut out of the center. And we're going to cut it the same way we did them there. Okay, this is going to kind of give you an idea of how this is going to set up. This is going to be your jaw up here, and uh, this these are your two arms and your base. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut one more piece of this for the bottom of this. I'm going to cut one more for the bottom. And we'll go up there and cut it off, and then we'll have our base, which we're going to clamp together. Okay, I got an old piece of rusty uh, all thread and I just wire brushed it and I'm just running this uh, tap over it to make sure the threads are good and we'll use this as our clamp uh, to be able to tighten our clamp up. It had a little burr in the middle here but I wanted to run that down over to make sure the threads were good all the way through. You see right there is where it got stuck. So. It should be perfectly fine when we get it back, get it on there. I'm just going to cut this off to the length that I need, and then uh, we'll have our way to tighten that clamp down. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take two washers, and I'm going to cut these washers out in the center, just so this nut fits down in there, and I'm going to weld one nut on one side, and then I'll weld the other nut on the other side. I'll do the same thing with the second washer. 
that'll give us something to be able to tighten these uh, the clamp or the bolt up with. What I'll do is I'll work it out until that nut fits right down inside there perfect. Okay, I got this little piece made. Now these these will spin out more than I left one inch. Uh, so I'm not going to be sewing anything thicker than an inch. I'm sure I'm not. This is basically just for knife sheaths. Uh, just for me to sit on a bench and do my knife sheath. So this will open up. Let's see. Here's our piece here. So we got one inch of opening on that. And then once we put our couple washers on here, this thing will uh, actually be real, real close. It should be tight by the time I put the two washers on. We got a little bit of about a, a sixteenth of an inch, but two washers are going to put that right up against there and be able to snug it up. So we got all this cut. And that's our clamp to clamp it together. We got the two washers welded on there so we'll have something to tighten it with by hand. Um, so I'll figure out what I'm going to do next and we'll get you guys back in here. Alright, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use one of my knife beveling edges here. And we're just going to take a little bit off of this lower side. About, um, maybe not quite three quarters of the way up. Okay, what I did is try to get that line as straight as I can across there, and that looks pretty good. I think this is going to work out okay. So, basically this stand, one part is not going to move, and the other part is going to move. So, what we're going to do is we're going to countersink a couple screws in here, a few screws, and then we're going to um, glue this head on this thing. We want it to be good and sturdy. So I'm just going to take a countersink bit, and we're going to countersink these screws. I think that's going to work right there. We should be able to put our screws in here. Now we'll have to pre-drill these all the way through because we sure don't want them to crack that piece of wood. But that being uh, that being plywood, it might be a little bit easier going through. So let's get one uh, drilled out here and then we'll my little bit, uh, my countersink bit is broke. The drill bit, I need to get some new drill bits for them. The tip broke off of it, but I still use it. It works. So basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clamp that together first. After we get them drilled out, we'll throw some wood glue on there and glue them up. I just need to make sure they're lined up pretty much perfect. where we want them. And then we'll go ahead and drill these out. Well, we'll get at least one drilled out. Then we might have to move that thing. So we got one drilled out there. We'll go ahead and put that screw in and we'll have to take these screws back out because we want to glue that in there. Probably should have put some glue in it now, but maybe I'll do that.
So we're going to go ahead and work on this bottom piece, getting it down. Uh, we're going to countersink a couple screws in here, and then we're going to glue this down. But this has to have a hole drilled in it for our clamp that goes underneath the table. So. Now what we're going to do, we're going to drill the hole through these two pieces here, which are our vise. I'm just lining them up together and drill them together. Okay, we got most of our holes drilled and everything. <coughs> These two bolts, this bolt is going to be the one that closes the clamp, like so. Now I'm kind of figuring this thing out as I go, so I really don't have a blueprint or anything to go off of. I'm just trying to do the best that I can and be able to get this guy to work. Because I think we're close to what we want. See now we're tight right there, pretty decently tight. Uh, so now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with uh, the bottom of this clamp. And I thought about just taking a dowel and going all the way through. Uh, so the dowel is actually loose, so these jaws both work too. They, they'll move back and forth too. And then once I get my uh, leather in there, I well, I could just break this loose, take each one of these out, pull it out to where I need my leather in there, and then uh, crank it tight down on there. And I think that'll work, even if I just used one single dowel and to where they actually come in and out. They'll move, you know, all the way off of that if I want them to. All I got to do is twist this off and both of them will come all the way out. So that way we could actually do bigger leather and then we clamp it like so. These holes even in here and through the vise could be a little bit looser I think. I could have drilled them a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to do the dowel. I really am. I think I want to do the dowel through here. That way it moves. It, it, it will always move. Okay, what I'm going to do now is drill these two holes where I want these to go. Okay, we got our <coughs> dowels in there now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these 
this back over to the drill and drill these holes a little bit bigger because we want them loose in there. Okay, so I drilled these out just a little bit bigger so they would be able to move around a little bit on there. So now we can open and close it. And if we have this bolt here in here, I might have to drill that hole out a little bit more too. That way we got more opening and closing on this. So what I think I'll do is take this over there and we're going to drill this center hole out a little bigger so we have a little bit more play on it on this hole here so it's going to open and close a little easier okay i drilled these out <clears throat> a little bit bigger than my bolt now so they they're kind of sloppy in there and that's kind of what we want we want it to be a little sloppy in there so let's get these slid on and we're going to see if we got some movement in here what we're looking for See, now we can open that vise up pretty wide and be able to put a pretty good sized piece of leather. We actually literally could slide it out like that because it's not going to fall off. Now we can snug our block closed. And we got a nice tight fit. Now I'll sand all this down, but I just want to get a rough idea of how I want this clamp to work. So I think this is going to work out okay for me for what I'm looking for. So now basically I got to get this mounted on this and to where it will actually work on my table in there. So I have to heat this up and open this up a little bit because it's not it's not um, it's not open enough to get on my table. And then I'll have to figure out how I'm going to put a bolt down in here with something so I can snug it up with. Okay, we got this to where it fits on the table just perfect and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up a spot and we're going to weld this bolt on here so that could be what holds the vise onto this clamp so we're just going to clean up a little area and get this uh, little guy welded on there Okay, for the bottom of this, where the weld is, I just took a knife and kind of tapered that around a little bit. So it sets down on there. And it sits down on there really nice. So we're not going to bolt this on yet because we got to figure out how we're going to clamp this. We need one of them holes down there to be able to clamp this thing to the table. So I think what I'm going to have to do is clean this off. There's already a hole in there. We'll get a bolt. I think my all thread might fit through there. And we'll use that, we'll weld a nut on there, and we'll use that for the <clears throat> to help hold that to the table. Okay, I think that we got this all finished up. I got me a little handle here now. I can tighten this up underneath of my uh, table, and I'll just put a small block of wood up underneath there so that center piece don't go into the table. Or I could just put a small washer on it. Just something to just don't keep it from going up underneath the table. This is not something I'm going to use every single day. I only got to put it in there every once in a while. All right, our little leather vise is uh, finished. Uh, this is uh, the one that I'm going to clamp onto my little table here. It's just a little plastic table you can see. And I wanted to be able to clamp it on there. I made this little guy. This is actually epoxy on there. It sets on here and when I clamp it up it doesn't go through my table and the that pin right there goes through there rests right in that little hole right there really nicely I actually had it clamped on the desk and it worked just fine um, 
we put a coat of paint on everything. It's a nice little coat of paint. We sanded down the uh, vise itself and then put a clear coat on it. I spray the coat of clear on it. And then I put some leather on the vise, which goes down both sides. Uh, and down on both sides like that. Nice little leather place to work. Uh, painted our little bolts. Everything looks really nice. You know, looks ain't everything. This thing has to work. So we're going to go ahead and get it clamped up. And I'll show you how um, I get it to clamp some leather. I think this thing's going to work out fine for me. I only needed this thing for um, doing sheaths. Uh, I've done a lot of, well, I've done a few sheaths. Not a lot, but I've done a few. And we're working on one now. And uh, I actually held the video up. So I could build this and put it on my table, which is going to make it a whole lot easier when I go to uh, uh, build a sheath and sew it. You know, this is going to be nice. I got I got extra hand now. So let's get it clamped up and see what it looks like. Okay, before we get to mounting this on the bench, we're going to give you some measurements just to make sure if you decide you want to build this thing, you will be able to. Uh, at least know some of the measurements on it. Now this piece here, if you guys remember, uh, those of you that follow my channel, uh, this piece here was found uh, at a cleanup day. This is a spring for like a bottom of a lawnmower seat. And uh, this is a spring steel. So, you know, the more you tighten it, the more this will spring out. Uh, but I think it tightens really well. For what I need um, so if you want to drill a hole through this you better have a good bit I actually took the torch and burnt this hole in here so I could put this clamp on this is a piece of 3 8 dowel uh, just was the same dowel let's see well I guess I didn't use it anywhere else on this project but yeah I did this is the same dowel that's going through here it's a 3 8 dowel uh, 3 8 bolts um, and then I just welded a T on this. Uh, I don't think it matters. It's about three and a half inches. And the bolt on the bottom was about three and a half inches long. Three and three quarters of an inch long. Uh, this thing here, <clears throat> as you can see, it's about nine inches or so. And this really doesn't matter. I mean, you could, if you didn't want it to go up on your bench, you could make it shorter. You didn't have to. And you don't have to use spring steel. You could use a quarter inch flat bar. Uh, that's a quarter by, let's say an inch and a half. No, inch and three quarter by one quarter. Inch and three quarter by one quarter. Uh, you could use mild steel and bend this. It's not gonna hurt. You don't have to have spring steel. That's just what I had. I'm not gonna buy it if I have something. And then this is all three quarter inch birch plywood. Uh, and we'll, we'll start off with the bottom of this. Uh, we'll do the side. It's it's a five inch vise, so all the material is in five inch pieces. So basically, just stick it on your uh, table saw and strip you out a piece five inches. Uh, that's going to do pretty much everything on this, besides this little piece here. And I just chopped it up. It's just a little spacer to keep it from crunching my table. This thing coming through. Uh, so let's go to the side. This might be a little easier for you guys to see. So at these all being five inches wide, we'll go with the first piece down here next to the bottom is about three inches. And then I put a little block right in between here. And I wanted it to be the same as these two here. And these are two three quarter inch pieces. So this is going to be an inch and a half. So you got a block there, an inch and a half. So you got uh, three, inch and a half. And then we'll go with this side piece right here. We'll go to the longest point. We'll go to the longest point. And it's about six inches. So we're at six inches up on there. And this is cut at a 22 and a half degree angle. Oh, uh, so these will both will be six inches long, cut at a 22 and a half degree angle. 
and I put the 22 and a half degree angle is actually on this piece up here too and we'll go from the longest part of that we'll go from the longest part and it's about one inch so this is about an inch so and both these blocks are the same uh, you've seen in the video where I countersunk and drilled down into these and I kind of put my bit in an angle a little bit so it would go up into this piece here and not out the bottom so I kind of angled them a little bit this direction and I did use a glue I used a uh, gorilla goo glue uh, gorilla wood glue if you want I can leave a link in the description for this stuff um, <clears throat> now the leather the leather is just an old piece of leather I had set in here. And I did go buy some Gorilla Glue for that too. And this is the original Gorilla Glue. And I can leave a link for it too if you want to pick up some of that. So that is all the wood structure and everything. So we'll uh, go ahead and take this apart and we'll get a length on the bolt. Now these are 3 8 uh, like I said, 3 8 bolts, a bolt and a nut. That's an all thread bolt. 3 8 washer. And we'll get a length on this piece right here. So I tried to, I wanted it at least an inch longer. So, than what my vise was going to open up. It looks to be about 4 and 3 quarters of an inch. So it's about four and three quarters of an inch. So that's how far it's going to open. Now, I put the dowels in here. These are quarter inch dowels. I drilled a quarter inch hole and then I tapped those into there. They're not glued or anything like that in case I need to change them out because I wasn't sure. As you notice when I was building this in the garage, I didn't really, I don't have a blueprint or anything to go by. I'm just going by the picture that's in my head. And whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. So I drilled a quarter inch hole and tapped these in. <clears throat> I tapped each one of these in. And then I come back and I drilled a slightly bigger hole in these. Because I didn't want them tight against the quarter inch. I want them to be loose so the vise has room to play. And that is the same way with this bolt here. When I put it in here... I want this bolt to be sloppy because we want that to be able to move in and out. I never thought that I'd ever sew anything more than about a quarter of an inch, but this vise opens up to probably at least an inch. So that is pretty much all the parts besides this bolt here. This is another bolt. Oh, this is this could be a three eighths. I'm not sure. This might be a little bit smaller than three eighths and I just welded it to the top of this piece here and then I just tapered that out underneath so where the weld was it would set flush down on this now when you bolt this up to the table or whatever you don't have to have <coughs> you don't have to have the jaws on there you can slide this on like this and then turn this in what direction you want tighten it down and then put your jaws on. It's so easy to put the jaws on and off that they don't have to be on there. Uh, they're really easy. It's not like you have any bolts to take out or anything. They just slide on from side to side. So that is all the pieces to my uh, vise, which is not too much. Uh, not very much at all, actually. Just a few pieces of wood uh, in the uh, uh, some tools and we got us a vise so now we'll go ahead and mount it on the bench okay we're going to go ahead and mount this on the bench all I have to do with this is to slide it up underneath and then I'll take my little block and I'll set it I'll set this right up on top of my bolt the bolt has a taper on it so it sets right inside that hole and then I will screw it up through there Pretty simple to do.
Okay, now that I got that on there nice and tight. Now, if I wanted to, and let's say I wanted to turn that thing in a different angle, I could just take this and spin it. If I wanted to work that way and, and do it like that or spin it straight. I'm just going to leave it straight on here. I think it's fine. That's probably the way I would sew. I would work from here. So now, like I said, there's no really nothing that holds these together. You're just going to slide that one on. Slide that one on. Take your pin, put it through both the holes, like so. Throw your washer on. Now, I think I probably could work on these this bolt here a little better. Um, but I don't know exactly yet. Once I get to using this a little bit, maybe I can uh, figure out what I want to do. Maybe I want to change that. But as you can see, we have a pretty good gap in here. My fingers fit in there. I'm not really going to do anything leather any bigger than that anyhow. Uh, <clears throat> if we wanted to sew a piece of leather, we'll stick it down in here. Give it a tighten. Now, if you're going to sew this, most of the time you're going to have this thing uh, pretty much glued together. And this thing will tighten really nice and tight. So now I have a good place to where I could sew. I could sew right here. Let me make sure you guys can see. You could sew without having any, you know, holding it with your hand. I think this is going to be really nice for me because I'm just learning anyhow. But to have a new addition, uh, a new tool that I made myself, it's uh, pretty nice. I really like it. And it was a fun little project to do. And it wasn't hard. Once I got all the measurements, everything, I probably could go out and whip one of these up in just a few minutes. Because I already know the measurements that I would use to build a new one. And it is on there pretty sturdy. Uh, it's, it's on there pretty sturdy. So... I think this is going to be a nice little tool to have. So, to pull your material back out, just pull it out of there. And like I said, I just built this basically to do sheaths. You know, I, that's all I've been working on is sheaths. Actually, I have one here setting, getting ready to put together, and this will be the first project that we do uh, with the new vise. Well, if you guys are looking for a simple uh, leather vise, I think this is about as simple as you could get it. Um, just a few pieces of wood and a little bit of metal, and you got yourself a vise. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them down in the comments, and I will do the best uh, that I can uh, to answer any questions. Uh, try to give you all the measurements in case you're interested in building one of these. And if you are, I think you're going to have a lot of luck with it because uh, I think this is going to be a good tool. So I would like to tell everybody thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. Till next time.